Hi everyone, um, so we're back for the next video here and mm -hmm. I'm Adi and I'm Sudhi. So last video we went through the TFIDF and count vectorizer and other stuff and so we, what we didn't do was go through the uh, machine learning models. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to do this week in this video. Um, and but before we do that, but before we do that, we wanted to go through a a specific thing which we did last video, yes. uh, which is fit and transform. So, what is fit and transform, Sudhi? So, fit is a universal, uh, fit and transform are the universal functions of SKLearn. <coughs> mm -hmm. So, fit when applied on a training data set, it basically learns uh, the model parameters. The model parameters could be uh, mean of the whole data set or the standard deviation. Mm -hmm. Transform when, uh, uses those applied uh, parameters onto uh, the training and the test data set and these two uh, could be combined together and, um, and, and used. Mm -hmm. In a high level uh, this can be thought as uh, a mo learning, model learning. Okay. So, with this, why don't we look at some of the algorithms uh, that we are supposed to do for this uh, whole video. Awesome. Okay. So, let's start with naive ways. So, this is the first machine learning algorithm which we're going to look into. Uh, naive means simple, simple and we all know Bayes theorem. Uh, so, Bayes theorem here is uh, uh, given, so P, the probability of uh, the class given the attribute, mm -hmm. so C is the class and X is the attribute. Uh, we're going to find that by using P of uh, X given C times P of C divided by P of X. So that's the base theorem. So, and we're going to look into an example here. Um, so, assuming we have a document and we have all these words, um, we're going to, it's kind of like a count vectorizer. So now we're going to look at the outcome here. The outcome can, out, the outcome can be positive or negative, mm -hmm. something like sentiment. Uh, so spicy can either be interpreted as a positive word or a negative word. And so the frequency table counts that, uh, the number of occurrences of the word spicy being positive or negative. And the likely video, sorry, the likely <laughs> likelihood table uh, here, we're coming up, we're finding the probabilities of each of them. Mm -hmm. um, so what happens here is uh, we're going to apply all these probabilities um, onto our Bayes theorem. So what is a common machine learning question you can ask? Um, what is the probability of the word cheap being positive? Mm -hmm. So that's the prediction which we want to see. Yeah. Um, so here we're going to now see what the probability of the word cheap belonging to the class, class positive is. So we apply this formula for this and then we find that it's 40%. So the word cheap being positive is 40% now. Mm -hmm. And on the converse, uh, the word be cheap being in the negative, negative class is also 60%. 60%. So that's a simple example of name base. And so we're going to look into a code example now with yeah. Subi. Yeah. Um, can you? Uh, whoops. Okay. All right. <coughs> so here we have... Um, uh, here we have an example mm -hmm. and uh, as you can see sklearn provides us uh, with with the naive base al uh, naive base library and mm -hmm. sklearn provides a library for all the machine learning algorithms be it cl classification or uh, clustering so here we are uh, importing a naive base uh, classifier uh, and in that we are um, concentrating on a multinominal naive base which is uh, which, which is one of three types of naive base algorithm that is defined in sklearn uh, here I'm considering the uh, a spam data set, which is a common data set for sentiment analysis. Mm -hmm. Here we are checking if the message is spam or not spam. And not spam is kind of uh, denoted as a ham here, just for the rhyming sense. And um, the first step in our classification, as we have learned till now, is to uh, clean the data. And here uh, we, I'm just mapping out... Uh, uh, ma mapping out the ham to zero and spam to one for easier easier classification uh, using uh, numerical data set and uh, with the message itself uh, to maintain the uniformity in the in the whole data set uh, just cleaning up some of the stuff uh, removing of the special characters and so on so after uh, cleaning the data next step is to normalize um, normalize the data set here I'm using count vectorizer for my normalization we can also use TFIDF uh, but since uh, this is a pretty straightforward classification where I need to check 
if the message is spam or not spam um, there are certain words which carry the weightage for the spam messages could be offers mm -hmm. or something like that mm -hmm. so in this in this case um, the count vectorizer is more than enough and sklearn also provides us with the library to uh, split the data for training and testing mm -hmm. um, this is a random uh, random split and we do not worry about um, picking um, first 20 next 30 mm -hmm. for training t 30 for testing and so on so here um, count is our x label and uh, what we are predicting is our y, la uh, y label which is data label which is spam or not spam and the test size is 0 0.2 so for every 100 uh, 80 80 percent is uh, training data set and 20 percent is test data set mm -hmm. x train and y train are your training uh, training data x test and y test are your uh, testing data y test is also known as the actual label mm -hmm. uh, here uh, the model uh, we are choosing as as we have spoken is a multinominal uh, mm -hmm. naive, multinominal naive base mm -hmm. um, and sklearn provides us uh, some some sa um, space saving uh, uh, features like we can write write the whole thing in a one sentence like uh, fitting the model into the model definition itself mm -hmm. and as as we have seen before uh, fit function um, fit, uh, fit, for, fit function learns the model parameters and on predict it will apply on our test and training data set so on, on predict we can see that we are predicting on the test data set and our predictions are pretty good uh, we can see pretty good here are our predictions uh, so how, we, we don't we don't see how the prediction goes on but we can see that our first three rows is not spam mm -hmm. and the first three rows of our actual label is also not spam mm -hmm. and the last three rows are not spam again and the last three rows of our actual data set is also not spam mm -hmm. so by this we can say that okay our algorithm is performing uh, pretty good but we don't know how good it is so with that we can um, use a models scoring strategy where it does a mean squared um, mean squared error of mm -hmm. the actual uh, label and the predicted label so when we when we calculate that we have a 98 percent of uh, correct predictions uh, since it's a uh, a common data set mm -hmm. it is uh, it is usual to have uh, such a good um, such a good prediction uh, prediction score mm -hmm. uh, so with that let us um, move on to our uh, other our other algorithms and we will see how it works mm -hmm. thank you okay that was nice so the next one we're going to look into is uh, a decision tree classifier and so what is a decision tree it's literally nested if else conditions um, so why don't we look at an example and we'll jump into the advantages and disadvantages later um, so we have a data set of 30 students mm -hmm. and uh, there are three parameters here gender grade and height and the label which we're trying to predict if is if the student plays soccer or not uh, and we know that 15 of the students play and 15 of them don't um, <coughs> so now when so what the decision tree does is it goes through every parameter we have and it splits the data based on that parameter and it looks for the best homogeneous value split mm -hmm. so what does it mean so let's take this so first we split on ba based on height less than 5.5 feet greater than 5.5 feet and so we have 12 students on the left side and 18 students on the right side of which five only play soccer here and 10 play soccer here mm -hmm. so this is not exactly a homogeneous split yes. so now then it look into say gender mm -hmm. where we have 20 10 as a split and 13 of the 20 students play soccer and here only two of the 10 play soccer so this is a homogeneous split yes. um, so that's what the tr a, a, tr a decision tree looks mm -hmm. like and this is just a simple ex simple explanation of a decision tree but there can be more levels to levels, this tree yes. and so it will keep splitting mm -hmm. until we get a really good homogeneous split yes and um, so that's a decision tree and why don't we look, look into, into an, an example. example so for the example now so as as we have seen multinominal naive base uh, where SKLN <coughs> provides us the library uh, it also provides the library for the decision tree classifier as you can see here sklearn.trees import uh, decision tree classifier uh, to maintain the uniformity I am um, using the same data set uh, to check if if the data or if the algorithm performs uh, any better 
uh, with the na uh, when compared to Navy base are pretty worse. So um, every every step is similar uh, with um, cloud. What do we say? A normalization or cleaning of the data. But when we go to uh, the model training itself, uh, SKLearn again uh, we have to use decision tree classifier instead of multinominal name base. And as you can see, the pattern here where uh, wherein um, it is it is the same way that we write our um, we we define our algorithm or we define our model. So instead of multinominal name base, I'm using a decision tree classifier and fitting for fitting our training uh, training data set so that the model learns how the how the data patterns are and when we okay for for just a, just a change uh, i'm considering uh, one of the rows from our data set which is actually not a spam and i want to check if my data set uh, if my model is predicting uh, the particular same particular message as spam or not as spam. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm predict um, the count df uh, gives me the prediction gives me if the value is spam or not spam. And uh, when we look at the, our prediction, we have array zero. That means mm -hmm. uh, that that means uh, uh, our prediction is not a spam, mm -hmm. and our actual data set is also not not mm -hmm. a spam. Mm -hmm. So when I ran this algorithm for the whole uh, test data set, mm -hmm. I got about 0.96 percent uh, of accuracy. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, 96 percent of accuracy. Mm -hmm. This doesn't mean that decision tree is uh, no good uh, when compared to naive base algorithm. Mm -hmm. It it all depends on the data that we consider. Mm -hmm. So depending upon the data, we choose our algorithms. But what are the disadvantages of a decision tree? Isn't that a great question, Sudhi? So, a decision tree is can only perform supervised learning. We we'll mm -hmm. just go through the entire thing. Uh, this is a summary. So, it can only do supervised learning. We need to know what we're predicting. It can do classification and regression. Yes. Um, the best thing is that it can do feature selection, mm -hmm. which is because it goes through all the parameters we, which we have, right? Yes. And uh, you can do both numerical and categorical. That's a great thing. But what is the main disadvantage of uh, having a decision tree? It's overfitting. What is overfitting? When our model gets trained too well, mm -hmm. it starts performing really bad with our test data. It starts the accuracy starts going down. So we don't want that to happen, and that's why we go for random right. forests. So what is a forest? It's made up of a lot of trees. Mm -hmm. So what random forest does is, it basically creates a lot of trees, a lot of decision trees, and it iterates through all the parameters we have, a sampled parameter, mm -hmm. uh, parameter list, and each decision tree tries to classify uh, the given data. Yeah. And random forest aggregates all these predictions from all the decision trees, and it literally checks for the vote. Mm -hmm. which label or the classification was voted the most. And that's the output for a random forest um, classifier. So what are the advantages of uh, random forest? It's really powerful. It can handle a large data set. Yes. It can uh, handle missing values mm -hmm. and still perform really good. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so those are some of them. And it obviously overcomes overfitting. Yes. Uh, why don't we look at an example real quick? Yeah, before that, I would like to say there's one slight disadvantage, but it is not to be considered as mm -hmm. a disadvantage itself because we get really good score, but it takes a little bit of time when compared to yeah. other two algorithms because right. it needs to iterate through all those trees in Obviously. the forest. Right. Mm -hmm. So why don't we now look at look at an example of our of our random forest? Mm -hmm. So as you can see here, uh, we have seen the trend of using. Uh, the same code for all the algorithms and it's no different for the random forest classifier again. Mm -hmm. So sklearn.ensemble uh, import uh, random forest classifier mm -hmm. and we are using the same data set, same method of cleaning so that we have uniformity in our uh, whole uh, program. So again here, um, sorry, uh, our random forest um, takes in some of the parameters mm -hmm. uh, from the user mm -hmm. uh, you can you can give it or it also it also defaults to some of the values mm -hmm. so the best way to start start is having 10, ten trees in the forest mm -hmm. and uh, walk through uh, 
walk through some of the iterations of plus 10 plus 10 so until you get an optimal value uh, which is optimal score for your uh, prediction mm -hmm. um, so here I'm here I'm considering 10 trees as as I've already said this is pretty um, biased data mm -hmm. or it's most used data mm -hmm. um, that that's the reason I'm just sticking on with the ten trees. Mm -hmm. It 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 performs the uh, it performs same for the fifty trees as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we learn uh, when when we when we do the prediction on our test data set, we have uh, uh, we have our predict uh, we have our labels predicted labels. And uh, when we check the score on X test uh, comma Y test, we have ninety six percent of uh, accuracy. This doesn't mean that again uh, random yeah. forest doesn't perform uh, better <coughs> than decision tree or uh, naive base it all depends on the data that we are working on yeah and so, that's because i mean rana forest performs really well with large yeah. data set yeah um so i think that's, that's it all for, for this video yep and uh, thank you for watching mm -hmm. bye bye